What's up YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over five tips to help you build your perfect pedal board. Let's go. So before we dive into the video, let's take a look at my pedal board, shall we? Here is my pedal board. This pedal board serves from everything, from gigs to lessons, to shooting videos in my apartment, and to help me get tones similar to that of the Grateful Dead. So not only does this pedal board look good, but it sounds incredible and does everything I require from it. The board was built back in summer 2018, and right after I moved to LA, by my buddy Mason Marangelo from Vertex, aka the Rick Doctor, and it's incredible and has everything I looked for to pedal board. So with that being said, let's take a look at the five tips to help you build the perfect pedal board. So tip number one to help you build the perfect pedal board is define what you're trying to achieve with this build. In my case, I play a lot of music with the Grateful Dead, so my pedal board is built around that genre. Let's take for example, I have a couple overdrive pedals, two real effects in the Qtron and the Octave pedal, two delays, and one reverb. So nothing crazy, but all the essentials I need to help me achieve those tones. With that being said, when building your perfect pedal board, define what you're trying to achieve. Now, you don't need 10,000 pedals and only use a couple of them. Make sure every pedal is on there for a reason, so no space is wasted. Let's go on to number two. Number two is your pedal board itself. This is key and maybe one of the most important on this list. Do you want a pedal train, a flat pedal board, a flat pedal board with a riser? Do you want a Schmidt Array pedal board that only YouTubers use? All these come into account because remember, you'll be taking this gig to gig, you'll be leaving your apartment, leaving your home, putting in the car. This pedal board will be carried a lot and may weigh a lot. So you wanna factor in your options to make sure you get the best out of your pedal board. Number three, which is similar to number one, is you wanna define what pedals you need to achieve the genre you're playing. For example, in my case, I play a lot of music of the Grateful Dead. So there's nothing really super distortion-y in that music. So in my case, I only have two real overdrive pedals. I have one clean boost in the Keely Katana, but my overdrive section is really the Centura by Tone, which is a clon type pedal, a very transparent overdrive and a mid boost, and my heavy overdrive, which is the TS-10. And I'm not even using the drive past noon. The drive is at 10 o'clock, but it adds a lot of distortion right there, and I don't need any more distortion. If I do, I can just add the katana for a clean signal or add more mids with the Sariton Centura. On the flip side, if you're a worship musician and playing a lot of church gigs, you don't need, I'm assuming, a Marshall and a box tone, all right? Again, choose your pedals that help you achieve the best tone for the genre of music you're playing. Let's check out number four. Number four has two points. The first point being patch cables. I highly recommend you not use solderless cables unless you're a musician playing at home and not gigging a lot. Yes, they may be easy to make a lot of, but they're also easy to break. So instead, learn how to solder and solder your own cables. They'll make a huge difference to your tone. On my pedal board, for example, I use Mogami 2319 and Switchcraft plugs. Again, all soldered. I know on YouTube, there's this whole fad of solderless cables are the best, but tell me one musician who's playing Matt Square Garden, who's playing with solderless cables on their pedal board. I don't think you can. So first point number four, patch cables and solder your cables. The second point in tip number four is have a good isolated power supply. I use a Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus. I have for years. It's freaking amazing and it's rock solid. Other great ones are the Strivin Zuma, True Tone, Chox, Freedman make a great one. They're all great isolated power supplies. Again, you don't want to use modular. Yes, because YouTube says they're amazing. But again, tell me someone who's playing at Madison Square Garden with a modular power supply system. I don't think you can. They're all using isolated power, such as Voodoo Lab, True Tone, Strymon, etc. They're the best and they're the most reliable. Number five, to bring it all together, I'd say just build your pedal board. Have fun and build your dream pedal board. You'll build it and you'll get inspired every single time you play it, whether it's teaching, making videos, gigging. You make it properly, hopefully you get inspired every time you play it 
and it makes you not only feel good, but play amazing. All right, guys, that's today's video. A short one, I know, my apologies, but those are my five tips to help you build your perfect pedal board. Let me know what you think. You saw my pedal board today, what's on your pedal board? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, press like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.